This is a video review of the most missed questions in part B of module 2 quiz. Uh, I'm going to um, hide the sidebar. Uh, we present we present on the course uh, website a video of this, but this will remind the class that this is what you can do to get more uh, territory for the quiz. You just hover your uh, cursor. Uh, it has to be um, in this part. It, you can't do it here, down here. You have to have it all the way scrolled to the top and then about here and you click like that and you see you can bring it back like this. Okay, so the first question that I want to review is question number one. Which is true about the cells shown in cross-sectional profile? Well, we we presented you with skeletal muscle cells and so the correct answer was each cell has multiple nuclei. So let's, uh, let's look in here, okay? So this, this is what we presented and actually this is a cross-section of a bone. Uh, if we uh, go over here and magnify this you will see there's osteones in the uh, compact bone. But the question was about this tissue here. So if we magnify this, you can see that it's a very eosinophilic cytoplasm. And you were uh, given the fact that this was a cross-sectional profile. So if you put two and two together, you see the nuclei at the edge and a solid eosinophilic cytoplasm with no nuclei in the center. It can't be epithelium, it can't be a, a loose connective tissue or adipose tissue. It has to be one of the muscle, uh, one of the muscle tissue types. So it's skeletal muscle. So uh, each cell has multiple nuclei is the correct answer. But some people thought that the cells all lack cross striations. Well, that's not true. Yes, in this profile they do. But if you recognize that these are strided skeletal muscle cells, then if you looked at them in longitudinal section, they were would have cross striations. But we didn't ask. Uh, what you see here in terms of the whole uh, information about the cell. You have to extrapolate that and look at it and turn it around in your mind and realize these do have cross connections. And some people thought they were branched. Well, if they were branched, you would see different sizes of cross sections and you should see a nucleus in the center somewhere. That's characteristics of cardiac muscle. Okay. Okay, the next question was question two, several examples of a structure encircled. Select correct identification. Well, the correct answer was normally contain a blood vessel. Only 25% of the class got that correct, and some people thought it was a lacuna in highland cartilage. But this was a specimen of bone, so let's take a look at that specimen. Here's the specimen. We're actually using the same specimen as we used for the question number one. And this is compact bone, and you can see the osteones, and you can see these little holes here. But uh, you also see the, if you enlarge this, you see a nuclei here in a concentric pattern around these open holes. So those are osteones. And these are our Hversian canals, and that's this particular one has blood in it. These are empty, but in life they would have blood flowing through them. So that has to be the correct answer, not cartilage. Cartilage would not be eosinophilic like this, and the cells would be uh, shaped entirely differently, and you wouldn't see the pattern of an osteone and bone. Okay, the ne next question asks you uh, to select the true statement about the intense blue staining ring shaped region in this virtual slide specimen. Well, the correct answer was has the most dense concentration of proteoglycan molecules. Well, this was the territorial matrix or the actual capsule around uh, a uh, lacuna in a uh, uh, cartilage. And the chondra uh, sites would be located here. And this is the territorial matrix. Here's the inner territorial matrix. And it's blue stained with hematoxylin. And that's where you have a high, high concentration of, of proteoglycans. 
And just pausing here for a moment, this is very characteristic highland cartilage. And you can see the perichondrium out here uh, on the other side. And these small cells here are chondroblasts that are forming chondrocytes. Question number five asks, uh, what process is occurring between the two dotted lines? And this was actually a specimen of long bone. And between the lines uh, was the epiphyseal plate. And the only possible correct answer would be lengthening of the diaphys. Now let's take a look at the specimen. Here it is. Here are the two dotted lines, and between is the epiphyseal plate. And if you enlarge this, you can see here's the zone of reserved cartilage. Here's the zone of proliferation, the zone of enlargement of the cartilage, and then the zone of calcification of the cartilage and bone deposition. So, but between the two dotted lines, this is the epiphysis here, and this is the diaphys diaphysis. So what is lengthening is the diaphysis not the epiphysis. And it is not intramammatous bone because of the cartilage present. And the transfer formation of hyaline cartilage into fiber cartilage is simply not true in this case. Okay, question number six. I ask you which is the correct description of the tissue region from the black dotted line to the space indicated by the two blue arrows? Well, the correct answer was a zone of tangential glining articular cartilage because it was uh, the articulating surface between two bones. And this is what this specimen looked like. You can see the epiphysis of this bone, the epiphysis of this bone, and we're asking about this area here. If you review the lecture on the cartilage, you will see that this is the area of the tangential or the gliding surface uh, part of the hyaline cartilage in this joint. Okay, so it, it can't be the calcifying cartilage or transitional articular cartilage, hypertrophying or proliferating cartilage. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Question seven. Question seven asks what is happening <clears throat> at the time of fixation in the field uh, presented. And the fuel was a, uh, presented was a bone marrow. And the only correct answer would be uh, development of blood cells. And so here is the specimen here. And you see the adipose tissue here, that is fat cells. But between you have all this, this tissue, which is the bone marrow cells, or red blood cells, or white blood cells being developed. And uh, this is a case where, if you were confused, you should look over here at this uh, macro image, and you can move around and see, or go at very low magnification, and see the context of this. Here's your bone marrow. These are bone spicules. And here is the compact bone with the adversian systems out here. So it all, and then, then you go back to the question by clicking on the annotation and go to. So that is... Uh, a very important thing to do when you are um, confused about a question. The next next question is a lamella in a, in a bone spicule. You were asked what term or phrase accurately identifies or describes the alternating light and darker acidophilic bands or lines in the structure between the two dashed lines and the correct answer was a lamella in a bone spicule. Not in fiber cartilage, not in hyaline cartilage, not lamella in osteone, or not elastic fibers. And this was a specimen. And again, we were using the same, same specimen uh, for several questions. And here we are over here. You see where the location here in, in a bone spicule, and this is the magnification of it. <clears throat> and you can see these lines, and you do not see any osteones. You see lacuna with osteocytes in them, and these lines are lamella in a bone spicule. Okay, okay. this question what it has more than one answer. There were three correct answers. Select all that are true about specimens 1, 2, and 3. Well, uh, the majority of class did okay for striated skeletal muscle and smooth muscle, but not so 
not so uh, so good for striated cardiac muscle. So here's the specimen. And of course, uh, striated skeletal muscle, that's pretty obvious. Smooth muscle, that's pretty obvious. And then you had to look over here and you see the nuclei in the center. That's a clue. Could be smooth or cardiac, but look at the box shape type nuclei. Compare those to the fusiform elongated nuclei of smooth muscle cells. And then you have to move around and pick uh, areas like up here. So it's always a good time. Now you can see intercalated disc. You can see branching and you see the box or shorting type uh, shape nuclei within the cardiac muscle uh, cells. So this this is cardiac muscle was number three. Okay, the next question presented a leukocyte, and it, you were asked which is the normal fraction of this cell in a differential leukocyte blood count. Well, the answer was from between zero and and 075 percent, and uh, so the class was pretty well divided. About half of the class chose the correct answer. And uh, I'm going to bring over the specimen here. And this is the blood cell. Now notice, you can barely see the nucleus, but you can see these granules. And if we enlarge it, you can see them better. And you can artificially enlarge it by pressing Z on your keyboard and then going like that. And now you can clearly see... Well, they're fuzzy, but you can see it has granules, and then the background is the nucleus. So this is a basophil, and then you had to know the percentage of the basophil, which is between 0 and 0.75%. And so you should be reminded to, to all of the uh, leukocytes in the blood do know their percentage. Okay. Okay, question 14. 50, almost 59% chose the correct answer. Chondrocytes are dividing. The question was, choose from the list what is true of the cells between the dotted lines. Okay, let's take a look. All right, you've got an epiphyseal plate, and you could decrease the magnification. You can clearly see the bone spicules. You can see, if you go back to the original place that we wanted you to look, you can see this is cartilage, and then if you look at this zone, look at the stacks of these cartilage cells. This this is the zone of reserve cartilage here, and then as stem cells begin to divide, they just stack up because the whole purpose of this epiphyseal plate is to add length to the long bone. And this is where it's being added. You see here is clearly the zone of hypertrophying cartilage cells. And then this is the zone of calcified cartilage. And then if we move on down here in this area, you eventually see that bone is being deposited in this area. So now, now we have bone forming. Okay. Okay, this question 15, uh, the correct answer was chondrocytes. Only about 44% of the class got it correct. The cells located between the two dotted blue lines in this virtual light specimen are destined to differentiate into which of the following cell types? Okay, let's take a look at it. <clears throat> well, overall, um, this is actually a cross-section of the trachea with a C-shaped cartilage. You're going to learn in the next module, 4. And this is the esophagus here that has um, stratified squamous, non-keratinized epithelium. And this is actually the thyroid out here. Now, you didn't need to know any of that. I'm just giving you some perspective here. Uh, what you were uh, asked to identify is this layer right here. And you had to recognize this is hyaline cartilage. And you have to recognize the properties of the hyaline cartilage. Uh, a mixture of eosinophilic and basophilic matrix with these very typical chondrocytes in lacuna. Uh, you know, the osteocytes are mostly flattened, but these are, are rounded nuclei. So out here is the perichondrium. This is the where the stem cells for it, making the cartilage 
wider exists. So out here would be the fibrous perichondrium, and this is the chondrogenic perichondrium with uh, stem cells. And these are now uh, chondroblasts, which eventually, when they get entrapped within the matrix, they'll become chondrocytes. Okay, question 16 is actually asking you to identify the periosteum on the surface of bone. And only 32 and a half, about 33 percent got this correct. And so let's look at the specimen. You see, here is uh, here's bone that is uh, at the edge, like this is a long bone right here. And again, you could uh, you could take this low magnification. You could see that here's an epiphysis here and another one here. This is actually a, a longitudinal section through the femur. This would be the greater trochanter, trochanter process of the femur. And this would be the epiphyseal head of the femur. And if we go back, now this is the area we're asking about, right on the edge of the bone, bone shaft, the uh, uh, diaphysis. And this is this is bony tissue here that is growing and forming Haversian systems. But out here, this is the perichondrium. Excuse me, uh, not perichondrium, but periosteum. So that's the correct answer. You And we accepted periosteum, fibrous periosteum, and we even accepted osteogenic periosteum. Okay, this next question, 17, uh, identify the cells indicated by the blue arrows in this virtual slide specimen. Well, the cells were megakaryocytes. And we pointed out two. And we accepted megakaryocyte cell in the singular and plural of the term. Only about 43% of the class got this correct. I suspect that many uh, thought these were osteoclasts. Now, again, this is bone. There's no question about that. And we're right here in this tiny area. Actually, the location is it's right there. Go back here to where it is. And we move this down. You can see you're right in the bone marrow. This is the bone forming. And there's, there's the periosteum out here. So we go back to that area. And these are large cells. We can enlarge them more. And you see that their cytoplasm is eosinophilic. And it's a very large nucleus, only a single nucleus in here. And this is polyploidal. It contains many times the normal amount of DNA in the nucleus to, in order to uh, orchestrate things in this very large cytoplasm in which the little the cytoplasm is is septated and little pieces break off that become platelets. Okay, so um, if this were a osteoclast, it would have to be very close to the bone surface in a little depression called Halship's lacuna, and they would be multinucleated. Okay, so those were megakaryocytes. <clears throat> now we'll go to number 18 and identify the dominant tissue in the circled region in this virtual slide specimen. Well, the correct answer was uh, cardiac muscle, and we accepted. Um, and since we gave tissue, cardiac muscle is OK. Uh, and we accepted a redundant uh, term, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take a look at the specimen. All right, here's the specimen, and we gave you a magnification in which you really can't tell any details. I mean, looking at it, this magnification, it could be uh, dense regular or dense irregular connective tissue. Might even be striated muscle tissue, and it might even be smooth muscle tissue. But it very well could be cardiac muscle tissue, and that's what it is. But you would have to enlarge this in order to determine that. So if you enlarge this area, you immediately see the nucleus in the center of the cytoplasm. You can see the branching. Now it's a little hard to see in circulated cells, but two of those three features is enough to indicate that these this is uh, cardiac muscle. Okay? Okay, here's the, the last question in module two, part B. 
two views of a tissue are presented in the right and left dashed lines, and the correct answer was striated skeletal muscle. So let's take a look at the specimen. Here on the left is a cross section, and on the right is a longitudinal. So if we magnify the cross section, and you can do that quickly by pressing on Z, and your cursor changes to a marquee, and you go like that, and right away you can get up there and see that these cross sections, the nuclei, are at the edge of the cell, and they're very eosinophilic solid uh, profiles. So these remind one of skeletal muscle tissue. Now let's go over here and take a look at the longitudinal, and immediately you see the striation. So clearly, this is striated skeletal muscle tissue. And so that concludes the review of the 20 questions, that is, most missed questions, in Part B of Module 2 Quiz.